This is you. you call. 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 Hello. Hi, Nan. And we're here, uh, streaming hey. live <laughs> early in the morning. Yeah. Way early. It's earlier for me. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's like so, uh, three o'clock, yeah, afternoon, so it's not too oh. bad for me. Yeah. That's, that's so weird. I just can't get my head wrapped around it. I've literally only been up a couple of hours anyway because I was up late last night just preparing for this. So oh, shit. Feel, it feels like the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh going to talk about a muck, but what we usually do is just talk about a few movies that we've watched over the last couple of weeks. So uh, I guess we'll start with Dirk. Yeah. Uh, well, the only real, real one that I've watched is uh, Bo is Afraid. <laughs> oh, no. That's a long one. <laughs> it's like three hours, man. Um, best way to describe that movie, it's not for everyone, for sure. It's a dark, pitch dark, black comedy. And uh, surrealistic as hell. Um, yeah. I enjoyed it. I think it's going to take like more viewings <laughs> to fucking understand what's going on all the way. <laughs> What about did you uh did you like Midsummer? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like Midsummer and Hereditary. Uh and the Johnsons, something about the Johnsons? I didn't watch that. Uh I've heard about it. <laughs> and then I watched um there's a stream we're doing next Saturday. Uh I watched uh The Virgin Spring. But, oh yeah. Uh, that's a damn good movie. Ingmar Bergman. I, I need to get into more of his films. I didn't. I mean, he's done like what, fifty-seven films or some shit. <laughs> it's something crazy. Is it that the one that's kind of like a? I don't know. There was one that they were saying that was kind of like a, like someone it breaks into a house and terrorizes people or. I no. Know, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Virgin Spring is uh, from nineteen sixty, and it's it's. A precursor to um, Last House on the Left. Yeah. That's what I was. That's what I was trying to yeah. articulate. But it takes place like in the 13th century. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a way different film. But you know, we're going to talk about it next week on uh, An Hour to Kill. Uh, CK is supposed to be on for that. Oh, cool. So, uh, yeah, we got um, John Grande coming on as well. Because basically it's going to be a show um, like we're going to have a certain amount of people, you know, championing Last Taste on the left. And it's yeah. going to be like a versus show. And obviously the other film is going to be Night Train, Train Murders, which I'm going to be championing. Mm. And we got, you know, so yeah, that goes. That should be a lot of fun. Cool. Well, if that's your only film, uh, we'll go to Darren. Have you, have you watched anything? Um, I've got a couple. Um, this one will probably surprise everyone. Um, first time watch for me is The Wicker Man. Oh, oh yeah. I can't believe um, it's the first time you've seen that. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I've obviously always seen the ending because it, it shows up in like every horror documentary you've ever known, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I finally got around to it, you know, thanks to Gizmo. Um, it's uh, basically directed by Robin Hardy, stars Edward Woodward, Christopher Lee, Britt Eklund and Ingrid Pitt, which is one hell of a cast, you know. Um, this policeman, he goes to Scotland, um, to this, like, island, um, and he tries to investigate this missing girl. Um, the whole town is, like, really freaky, and, like, things throughout the film just unsettle you. Um, like, there's this weird school, this weird teacher. Everyone in this village it just seems to be weird nonstop. Um and then, like, what threw me was, like, it's a strange mix of, like, a musical with a folk horror. Yeah. And I was like, shit, you know, at first, until I, I really got into it then. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, I really enjoyed this. So I think you know, obviously Britt Eklund getting nude at one point as well. That's one of the is that really her? I th- for some reason, I remember something about that being a body double, but maybe I could be wrong. Well, well it's her topless, but then oh, yeah. when she tur- when she turns to the camera, it's yeah. the body double. So yeah. the whole bum and all that is a body double. But we do get to see most of her, you know. Um, yeah. But Christopher Lee, like just absolutely steals the show in this film because he's not, I, I wouldn't say he's on camera a long time, but when he is, he's just absolute dynamite, man. And this said, character is creepy. He said that's his uh, favorite film that he ever did. And I think he did it for free, didn't he? Yeah. I was watching the documentary and he actually <laughs> said he was that impressed that he did it for free because he said if him and Edward Woodward had got paid, then that would have been the whole price of the production. And I mean, yeah, so, and he went on every kind of talk show, certainly in the UK and, and I think a few in America at the time promote it. And he really, like everyone, even the producers were saying, this film is a load of garbage, but he stuck by it and stuck by it <laughs> and um, proved to be right in the end. But yeah, I'm still trying to process the film a little bit. I did like it. And um, I think next time now, in the next week or so, I'm going to watch the director's cut. So, yeah, that was a winner, the, man. You going to watch the Nick Cage version? Yeah, that's what I was going to no, ask. No, <laughs> no. No, my, my mate. Not the my bees. Mate, the bees. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hear about the bees. My mate actually went to see that when it came out. And, um, no, nah, it wasn't a favorable review. Um, the last one I'll mention is one that I mentioned last week that people may not have seen on Gizmo's channel. It's Fear City from 1984, oh, yeah. directed by Abel Ferreira. So you've got strippers in Manhattan, New York. They're getting stalked and maimed by this like psycho killer. Um, the sex boxer turned talent manager and his partner set out to like try and solve, you know, who the killer is and all that. I, lo- I absolutely love this one. Um, it's, it kind of surprised me because it's straight up slasher. Um, and you've got all the like... Uh, New York grind houses of back in the early 80s and all that. I love that. We've got this song, uh, I think it's called New York Doll, that plays over the opening and end credits. I thought that was awesome. Um, but the killer is kind of played, played really well by John Foster, but he's kind of like strange because he does all this martial arts shit. <laughs> he's, he's slashing all his victims, but he does all this martial arts. You've got to watch him, man. It's, it's um, kind of like a Cobra 10 to Midnight vibe. They give me but um and you've got like a childhood trauma and all that that comes into play this ex-boxer you know we killed somebody in the ring um so yeah uh on top of that you've got melanie griffiths who's a stripper you know it's always nice to see yeah. i think tom berenger is basically the best part of this film he's awesome i think um and there's that great showdown at the end which is um kind of like got a blood sport vibe to it um, so I would highly recommend for your city. I think it's now out on Blu-ray, but um, well, I got the old DVD. Well, in the states, uh, it, I think it weird to me about that movie because it seems like it was a low-budget movie. Uh, I don't think it was released by any major studios, but I could be wrong. But it just seemed weird to have a lot of these uh, that were pretty famous at the time in this kind of weird sleazy movie. I know uh, Melanie Griffith, of course, did uh, Body Double around that time, too. That's right, yeah, the same year, I believe. Um, Yeah. And it's kind of got that Skinner Max type feel to it. (laughs) Yeah, it does. It is sleazy, I'd say. Uh, Okay, is that anything else? Um, That's my two, yeah, for this week. Uh, Let's go to Dana. She's always a movie watcher of the week. Well, I've got about three. Three? So, one, me and Steve watched together because Steve was going through Tubi trying to find something that we both could watch. And and I wouldn't sit there and complain about it the whole time. So, um, he came across Magic, that old film with uh, Anthony Hopkins. Oh, yeah. uh, And I said... Hey, let's watch Magic. And I thought Steve had seen that before. And he said, oh, okay, good. I haven't seen that. Um, I don't know what Steve's doing. But anyway. (laughs) um, 
He acts like he was going to hit me with his little bat flashlight. That's ridiculous. I was just doing this. <laughs> yeah. No, inf yeah. no continued viol violence wasn't happening. All right. But uh, anyway, I always love this film. It's very, very creepy. Keeps you on edge. Kind of keeps you guessing. Uh, is, you know, is Corky, Anthony Hopkins' character, is he just losing his mind? Is his ventriloquist dummy really, you know, making him go out and kill people? Is the ventriloquist dummy possibly going out by himself and killing people? Um, so there's there's a lot of different angles you could take with that. Uh, but then Steve didn't understand the end. I did. You said it didn't really make sense. I mean, to me, it's kind of a ridiculous ending, but, you know, I understood it. Okay. I mean, you know, that little bit at the end, but, but you know, like you say, it makes more sense that that's just nothing. I just think Anne Margaret was just kind of kidding around yeah. uh, at the end. So people that have seen that, you know what I'm talking about at the, the very, very end of it. Um, Dirk and Darren, have you both seen that one? I've never seen it. I've got oh, an old DVD. Um, I've got a film called Dead of Night as well from 1945, which is kind of similar. Oh, um, yeah. That I've read anyway that's kind of similar. But I've, it's one I've always wanted to, but yeah, I've never seen it. Yeah, I would recommend it. I actually have a Blu-ray of it, which I don't think it's on. it's okay. That's all I can say about it. Well, I thought it was going to be a little bit more crazier than what it was. Uh, I don't know what I was expecting, but, you know, it was fine, but it's it's nothing that I would want to revisit for a while. I think if it had been crazier, Maybe more. it wouldn't have worked. I mean, they yeah. could have went really over the top with that movie, well, yeah, and but... I, don't, I don't think they did. And it's more of a, a, a psychological case study. It almost seems like a play. Yeah, it does. Because of that very, kind of very like few locations and it could have been done <coughs> on a stage but and of course Burgess Meredith is on it playing a very sleazy agent so if you want to see Burgess Meredith uh, this is a good film to watch him in because he's in it quite a bit um, let's see and oh for uh, Joe Bob this week his special they showed uh, some clips from the Jamboree uh, that he and Darcy were at, was it back in the summer? No, it was like two years. It was oh, in was 2021. Oh, okay. Um, and they also uh, showed Night of the Demons on Shudder because that was the movie they watched that particular night at the Jamboree. So, uh, oh, my. Nice. So I, I got to re-watch Night of the Demons and also see those cool clips from the Jamboree. Um, and then I, I tried for two nights to watch Halloween, the original Halloween, and I keep falling asleep. But that's not because it's boring. I love Halloween. Um, but eventually I'm going to rewatch it again. It's not like I haven't seen it a million gazillion times. But there you go, Steve. That's Did you get that uh, Night of the Demon 4K? Um, I think I got it pre-ordered. Night of the Demons, right? Not Night of the Demon, right? Right. Yeah, no dick, dick ripping. Yeah, no dick ripping <laughs> demons. Right, exactly. I'll, I'll just stay with the Blu-ray if, the, if they put out a 4K. I'm not getting it. <laughs> I've got a still book that they put out, and it looks really great. But yeah, it, I just can't spend no more money on. I mean, good Jesus. Yeah, it, it's enough. It's getting crazy. But uh, I'll talk about two movies. Uh, one, it's coming out from Mondo Macabre, or I guess that's how you say it. That's how I say it. Um, it Macabro? Capabro. Yeah. <laughs> I've been oh, saying man. it wrong for 20 years. Uh, but, or Mondo Macabre, as uh, uh, CK says. But uh, it's called Curse of the Dog God. Oh, shit. And it's a, it's a Japanese right. movie. Yeah. And, this movie was weird. And... I thought it was going to be one thing, but it turned out, I don't know. So these, this guy is in this small area, a village or whatever. And, uh, his company and stuff are looking for like, I guess, uranium or something. I don't know. 
and they find a bunch of it, and, and then they're driving back, and they accidentally kill this dog and this little boy. I guess he owns the dog or whatever. And so you would imagine that that would be the start of the of the curse as part of it, but um, he marries this uh, a woman who's from that village, and her close friend is also in love with the same guy, and I guess that she... She the the woman starts cursing it, cursing them because of she wants the other guy. Anyway, there's like three or four guys with him when he accidentally kills a dog, and um, he uh, two of the guys jump off uh, the roofs of these big tall skyscrapers for some reason. Obviously, they're seeing some creatures or getting possessed, and another guy, I forgot what happens. Oh yeah, he gets attacked by a, a giant group of German shepherds and they <laughs> kind of rip him apart. I mean, I've never seen that many German shepherds before. I wouldn't want to. So they, um, and his wife, him and his wife go back to the village because they, they think there's some, like the curse going on. She gets possessed, uh, during this thing and she ends up dying. So now he's all alone. <laughs> and, uh, he gets possessed. Like, she gets she gets possessed by the dog god. Oh shit! <laughs> and then he finds her outside, uh, in the snow. But she's still alive for, of course, for a few seconds before she mm. cro she dies. And then um, he goes back to the town. There's a there. I won't go into a whole lot of detail, but there's like a a biker gang. That's not really, that looks like a really crazy biker gang. It's the, they don't have leather or anything, but, and then there's the villagers who, who blame, blame him and, uh, his, his dead wife's family for all the issues. Uh, there's one scene where, uh, after something really bad happens, they bury this dog and then they, of course, they go away, and it comes back, and it's like a stuffed animal dog buried in the ground to its neck, and he, this guy cuts its head off with a sword, and <laughs> then it, then it jumps on him and and kills him. Okay. It's a lot of crazy shit, but it, it's not enough for me to uh, recommend it. But it's it's an interesting watch. But um, is it better than Monster Dog? No, Monster Dog's better. <laughs> I mean, but uh, the the last one is a Shutter movie. It's a Malaysian horror movie called uh, Blood <coughs> Blood Flowers, and this was a more straightforward kind of a possession. People getting possessed by demons and, and or demon, and they kill people and and there's this big giant flower in it that looks like a dildo. Damn. And then it then it's got this leafage that blossoms out, wow. and there's a reason why they call it the blood flower. I guess it kind of oozes this red stuff, but there's also other reasons. But there's like a this is a very uh, uh, Islamic kind of movie. I mean, uh, all the stuff they're doing uh, as far as exorcisms includes stuff to do with Islam, uh -huh. but. But I mean, for what it was, it, it it did go on. It felt like a hundred hours, but for some reason, it was only an hour and forty three minutes. But it just it just dragged a lot. But you know, if it's it's worth a watch if you have Shutter. So I, they break it, out the they break out the Koran instead of the Bible. <laughs> uh, they, I don't know if they brought they broke they. I didn't really remember seeing it, but in the subtext or subtitles, they'll say like they're reading a verse from it or something. Right. And then there's a lot of peace beyond, uh, uh, peace be upon you talk. Okay. And they live in this really filthy looking freaking gigantic tower. Uh, you know, I guess they, it's all they live. That's how they live in those cities is these big, nasty old buildings. They look like parking garages really from the outside, but, but anyway, that's the last, that's the only two I can remember. <laughs> watching. That's what I remember you watching. So, we'll uh, kick it over to Darren's pick of Amok. Right, yeah. So, this is Amok, and I apologize to Dana straight off the bat, because I, I can't see... I, I'm interested to see what she thinks, but I can't really see a like in it. Um, <laughs> no. 
So yeah, yeah, on the cover of the book as well. It's awesome. Yes, um, yeah, I don't have a physical copy, but I got this. Yeah. Hold so on. it's um, basically a film, 1972. Um, it comes under like lots of different, like it's got lots of different um, titles. Ones like In the Pursuit of Pleasure. Um, mm. The German title is Play Hotel. Um, which is kind of confusing because there is a genre called play motel. Um, yeah. UK was hot bed of sex, yeah. and I think that was like seventy-seven cut minute cut <laughs> version. Um, Footprints of the Killer, Lever, Lever in Whips was actually the American title at one stage. Yeah, from uh, um, something something weird video. Yeah, that might have been short the edition actually, um, and replica for a crime. So um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like Silvio Armadio only really did he did quite a lot of Italian films, obviously, but he only did like three or four Jali. Um, he did one assassination in Rome from 1965, Smile Before Death, which I think most people will know through um, Arrow coming out of it pretty, pretty recently, mm. and So Young, So Lovely, So Vicious in 1975, which is one that I, I'm kind of really keen to watch now. Um, so yeah. And, um, I don't want to go too long windy with this one because I don't want to bore like the viewers too much. But um, this stars Farley Granger, Rosal Neri, Barbara Boucher. Um, you've got the secretary of a writer and his wife, um, like investigates the disappearance of her lover, um, that, which is the previous secretary, um, and finds herself the target of the couple's like erotic desires and like a murder plot. So the opening. Like we open up and you're in Venice and you've got this beautiful like waterways of Venice. Um, you've got Barbara Boucher going along in this boat. The soundtrack is amazing. Um, she arrives as a, as the secretary, so like Farley Granger's, um, you know, is a, he's like a writer. So, but um, I got his the, wife out. Go I got on, those, sorry, uh, I got those uh, Epstein vibes. From old boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you, now you say that, yeah. Um, but you've got Eleanor, who's his wife, and she's played by like Rosal and Rosal Benieri, and super freak. Like she's stunning, but she's got kind. Of, she's like she's stunning. She's beautiful and all that, but she's kind of got this evil kind of aura about her in, yeah, in most yeah. films she plays. Yeah. She can play, yeah, man. But um, Are you yeah, we're oh, like we're, 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 we're literally. You notice that? What's that? It's like the second movie in a row where she's she's got guns shooting <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you put this would play actually well with Top Sensation, wouldn't it? As a double feature, yeah. but um, so so yeah, Sally was the previous secretary. She's gone missing, but um, we find out that Gret and Sally were like good friends. Um, she wrote this letter before her disappearance, which was like you know really concerning and um. She's basically there just to find out what's happened with, you know, with her friend and that. Um, yeah, it's more than a friend. Yeah, we find that right. Yeah, <laughs> but later on, but early on we get like to see, like Boucher naked, like again within the first like ten minutes, um, which thankfully you know happens all the time in this film, which is great. Um, you got Rocco, this huge mentally challenged man. He's at the window. Um, he's kind of spying on her, and we get to see her naked at that point. Um, but like Eleanor, then the Rosal Benieri's character gives her some, you know, gives her some to calm her nerves. Um, yeah. I mean, literally gives her something to calm her nerves. Oh, yeah. um, we get this slow motion lesbian scene, and it's just—I won't swear because this is on someone else's channel, but it's just amazing, man. Um, I love it, the slow motion of her Rosal Benieri throwing her top. Yeah, and it yeah, just, yeah. It is, that that's art right it's there. Done, done really <laughs> it, well. It, it, like it's so trashy. It. Yeah, but it's classy at the yeah. same time. <laughs> yeah, and it seems to go on and on. Like you know, yeah. when you first watch it, you think slow motion, but not many directors can do slow motion like that. I just I'll just say that. No, and he comes into play again because he does it again later on in the film, which will will come on yeah, to like. That's, but it's that's worth buying. I think. <laughs> yeah, they, there's two or three. But it's worth buying just for that scene. Yeah. Um, and then the two of them, then this Richard and this Eleanor character, you know, the writer and his wife, they put on this really weird, like, I don't know how you could describe it, like a swingers party. Oh, um, 
Yeah, sexy, sexy, uh, kinky fucking sex games like orgy shit. Yeah, you know, yeah, we like computer they got Red Riding like... Hood porn going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they watch this Red Riding Hood porno, and um, yeah. I mean that's the version I want to watch. You know, if ever I wanted to, you know, send me put on the Red Riding Hood. Um, and we find out then that the missing secretary, you know, Sally, is actually in this film as well. Yeah. Which kind of makes it all the more freaky. Um, and obviously then, you know, Richard's feeding, a, you know, his secretary ideas for his new book, chapters for his new book. And they all seem to be like the same scenario as, as what Greta is going through. Um, and she's kind of obviously concerned about this. And um, we get another flashback scene then that Dirk was on about in this waterfall. And again, man, this is fantastic. Um, so we get Greta and Sally under this waterfall naked. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. Uh, it go it goes obviously into, <laughs> it's into slow motion. Like, I know Dana's probably thinking <laughs> at this point, Dana's probably got the remote ready to turn it off, but um, yeah, and we find out they were lovers, and um, yeah, man, he just seems to do that stuff really well, the silly yeah. sort of aspects. Um, but yeah, by this time then, you know, Greta's obviously convinced now by uh, Richard's story is basically based on Sally's disappearance. Um, she tries to get over the cops. Um, she stumbles upon Rocco, like his like little shack in the like woods or whatever by the by the sea or whatever. Um, and if you don't like animal violence, then there's quite a little, quite a bit of it in this film because he slices mm -hmm. open this eel. Oh yeah. And, um, he nails it there, man. It's kind of gross. Um, yeah. Um, and then we get a lot of birds getting shot later on in the film. But, um, yeah, so he kind of, in doing this, he cuts his finger, which kind of comes really into play later on in the film. Right. Because Barbara Boucher shows him a little bit of compassion and kind of bang, bandages his finger up, but she can't wait to get out because he keeps eyeing her up. Um, He's kind of like Frankenstein. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kind of this big brute, like really hulking type figure. Um, Rape, rapey, uh, uh, rapey Frankenstein. Oh yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but then for me, in terms of like suspense and and like shallow elements, we come on. To, I think one of the best scenes as well in the film, where you know, um, and he and he can shows he can really direct. You know, this type of scene. Where Greta gets stuck in like this marshland, like I don't know if it's quicksand or or something, um, yeah. while they're out hunting, um, and she's kind of convinced that they're trying to kill her. Well, um, yeah, they're shooting right at her. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I know. And boom, 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 boom. like, damn, what the shit? Yeah, uh, be a little more discreet about it. Shit, it's kind of like really weird to where that you know part of the plot goes as well in a bit because. Um, they're definitely trying to kill her, and uh, it's like the policeman kind of turns up right at the last minute to save her. As they I'm scratching used to my do head because they're, you know, they're trying to kill her, and it's very obvious. And then they're like, "No, you're just confused. You're just crazy." You know. I know, and <laughs> what what was strange for me was she kind of does 180 as well, where she's convinced yeah. Richard's kind of killing, gonna kill her, and yeah. then she falls in love with him, which is yeah, really that's weird to me. Very weird. Because earlier in the film, him. earlier in the film too, there's a guy. He just starts like getting it on with Boucher, I guess, because she's yeah. drugged up and she's more sexual, I guess, because they're drugging her and shit the whole time. Well, yeah, like Sally's ex-boyfriend or whatever, you know, was trying to come on to her, but yeah. it's He's really like, weird. Man. Um, but then obviously, you know, Richards kind of one step ahead of her in everything. Um, Eleanor ends up having sex then with this Sandro character that Dirk just said um, in, in kind of this flashback because we have kind of quite a few flashbacks in this film. Mm -hmm. And Sally is some kind of sex slave. Did you get that out of it? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like just, also there's this whole other element of uh, hypnosis, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so why the hell would Sally be dancing like that? And 
You know what I'm saying? God, the record, every time she puts the music on. <laughs> well, it's hypnotizing because they just can't, what do they say, sensual? Sexual. Oh, sexual. sexual. All right. Oh, that song is awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gizmo said he put that in one of his movies. <laughs> really? Wow. I yeah. know oh, I, I can't see that now. I was kind of hoping the soundtrack was on here so I could uh, <laughs> loop that into like 10 hours. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, yeah. You could probably lose a lot of weight doing that dance. Oh, yeah. You but like Dick said, dance, you want to do her, I oh, think. Well, well, she finally conked out after the dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, basically, like Rocco ends up strangling this Sally. Um, and it kind of, yeah. kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, but uh, it's like, it, well, it really gets into like, a lot of twists that, and That's too. after he was... Uh... Screwing Rosa- yeah. Rosaba, so he had still some more left. I was like, "Good damn!" Yeah, yeah. he's kind of made out to be this sex, like kind of sexual freak who can who can last yeah. for hours and. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but then you come into like it's just twists and turns all the way, and I don't know how far you want to go with this. Like, do, do you want to give everything away or what? Um, I mean, I it's up to you. Go. I mean, it is a fifty-one-year-old movie. Yeah, but you know, yeah, but, yeah. but, but yeah, it, yeah, we could too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, Eighty-eight films release. I don't know. I guess it's still out there. Oh god, yeah, and it's definitely yeah. it's like they kind of hit a miss with their stuff sometimes. But this, the whole print on this film is fantastic. I don't think it's ever going to look better. Um, is there yeah. a ton of uh, features on it? Or, yeah, yeah, there's quite there's quite a few actually. There's a Q and A with um, Baba uh, Baba Boucher. There's an interview with Rosal Baneri. Hell yeah, that's um, working alone right there. Yeah, I didn't get around to watching him for this moment, but it's definitely you know well worth getting. Um, here's a so picture. Co- I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I was just saying. Here's a picture about five months before she did that Q and A that me and Dana met her in Cleveland, Ohio. Damn. Okay. Oh man, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, too. she she gave me this printout uh of uh of something that uh I guess they took a picture where they were t- in between takes of uh Don't Torture a Duckling and it was her and Fulci sitting around. Damn. And maybe that priest too, the the naughty priest. <laughs> and Fulci liked her, right? They got along pretty good, from what I understand. I don't. I haven't heard anything about her and uh, and uh, Katrina McCall having, you know, being tortured by him or anything. Yeah, so. Katrina yeah. McCall would just kind of say, "Oh, you're just being ridiculous," you know. Every time he would get mad. But I think I'm, he was like Hitchcock, where one he where he had a thing for blondes, and I think you know, leading ladies. Yeah, and and those two kind of. You know, with his sweet spot, I suppose, where he never really got, you know, shaped at them or anything like that. Um, but yeah, like I say, there's there's loads of twists and turns. Like during this thunderstorm, then the the film flips 180. You know, Richard seduces Greta, which I didn't see coming at all. I, and I say, I I kind of find that part a little bit ridiculous because why would she fall for like Farley Granger anyway? Exactly. He's 50. That's what I said. Well, he wears shit like this around his neck and tucks it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's got he's got Conway Twitty hair in this movie. Yeah, he's got to be fifty, surely. <clears throat> like, and um, he was in a he was in a Hitchcock film, Rope. He was, he was also yeah. in uh, Strangers yeah. on a Train as well. Before yeah, he big, ended um, up in uh, Italy. Well, wasn't he, he in the prowler as well? He, he was yeah. in the prowler yeah. as the yep. sheriff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he did quite a few, like, you know, slashes. Yeah, he was in a lot of stuff early on. You know, he's he's probably the, as far as actors in this film, I think he's probably the standout. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did, he did do quite a few Charlie as well. But, um, like, with Boshe, this was, like, kind of really in her spot where, I think 1971, she made, um, I think she made um, Blackberry yeah. Tarantula. 
no sense in two tone torture that lane she made quite a few man um but yeah like i say um she kind of tells this cop as well then that everything was like this big mistake she doesn't want to go further with you know trying to find out you know basically saying that it's all been a mistake and she doesn't want to continue with the investigation and all that which is weird um yeah, and then bizarrely <clears throat> yeah yeah bizarrely then this dead one or hey a dead woman shows up um and again we don't know you know who it is or whatever and it's kind of like suspenseful for that but what about um, the one scene where it's like supposed to be some kind of damn supernatural shit going on <laughs> like you know what I yeah mean? yeah when the blows open and resolve an acts like she's somebody else and shit like from yeah she kind of gets possessed or well, apparently gets possessed by the yeah. spirit of sally and then yeah. she tells greta then that she's going to die but obviously when you find and out what's going on there. where the hell did they no, go no no i they think that was just <laughs> that was all meant to put in like this false sense of security where yeah. It, like he's feeding her information in he throughout the film with the story to try and get in her head um which comes obviously comes into play you've got the but the butler guess is frog slash and we find right. out that he was blackmailing you know richard yeah, and, uh, and eleanor yes you know um but then we're moving on to the end now towards the end and um eleanor entices greta to the room where like rocco is um like Richard, Richard tells Greta that he, he was actually there in Sally's death, and they kind of all turn on Greta now at this point. Um, uh, and then it's really weird because um, they're tr basically going to kill Greta now at this point in the film. Um, Rocco, they've kind of got planned to do all, to, to murder Greta and to get kind of you know get all the murders get done for all the murders basically. Because um, they got it all mapped out, but in some weird kind of twist of fate, you know, Rocco remembers the fact that you know she banded his finger earlier on in the you know film, and he kind of showed like a bit of compassion towards her, and he ends up killing the two, Richard and Eleonora, um, and then yeah, it's, it's kind of really weird then because it ends abruptly with um, you know they find out that this girl wasn't actually um sally and then it, it comes to like this yeah, really abrupt they thing. yeah yeah so yeah i hope i didn't go on too much like um no but that that's a much um obviously we'll go through each other like everyone's thoughts and see what they think well i mean the first time i ever saw this film it was one of these real bad <laughs> i don't know if i guess it was vhs but it it was where they, uh, back in the, some films, back in the day, they didn't do pan and scan, at least on the credits. So they stretched the image, and this was one of them, and it was just a really odd uh, effect. And, of course, really grainy and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, it, I find it uh, great to watch every once in a while. Of course, for all the reasons we've uh, went over, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's it's just uh it is a uh like a one death jello with a damsel yeah. in distress kind of thing but I mean kind of a it's got a mystery to it so it is something uh that fits in there and it is a a pretty good jello that uh you know that's not not an argento or a fulci one or a martino one so well, the look of it looks like I mean I hate to say this it looks like a baba but it's, it, you know, it can't be a bomb because it's so damn trashy and sleazy. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. classy the way it's done, though. It's not like other sleazy jello, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You can, you can see, like, Smile Before Death as well. It's very similar. It, it's, it's well shot and, like, cinematography. Right. Those scenes in Venice, I thought, were fantastic. Um, Would have loved to have seen a little bit more of that. Right. No, I don't think it's got a U.S. release. No. Uh, but, I mean, this must be a region-free release because I didn't have to change anything. Okay. So I need to get that, that uh, 88 film. I, I definitely look on eBay for it because it's well worth I tell you, even if you've got to pay a little bit over the odds. Is it out um, of print? I guess it's out of print. Probably, yeah. Yeah. 
Because yeah. I didn't even get, I was even too late for the slip cover. Um, but I can't see it coming out anytime soon on it, you know, in America or anything. So, I mean, I think it might, uh, you know, some other, if the rights become available, one of the other boutique labels would get a hold of it. At least for the states, for the you know get the rights for America or and Canada. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Dana, what's your thoughts on this one? Okay, well, uh, let me start off by saying this is probably the ultimate male fantasy film <laughs> because yeah. well, I mean, like we talked about, why would Barbara Boucher? Why would her character be crawling all over? Farley Granger in that one scene and rubbing her boobs all over his chest and like Yeah, and he was really getting into that scene yeah, as well. Yeah, so. yeah, he was, you can tell. I mean, her boobs were just bouncing all over him. She was quite young on this, so she yeah. she was all firm in all the right places. I'm not trying to be vulgar, I'm just saying saying she <laughs> I mean she she was easy on the eyes for people that were you know, see her naked. So. But it's, I don't know. I think it was too sleazy for my taste. Now, I've watched some sleazy stuff. But, you know, like Maniac's sleazy. But Maniac doesn't have a lot of uh, sex and stuff like that in it. It's just mainly <laughs> Joe's Fennell oozes sleaze in that movie. Yeah. But this one... It was just like scene after scene of it. it's like how how much can we titillate the male audience where they're just they did it it almost seems like a masturbation film and again I'm not trying to be vulgar but Dana's really <laughs> selling really selling this name to the male I, audience. I, which is, I am, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately I am <laughs> because I could just imagine, you know, I'm not saying guys that are middle-aged or older wouldn't get off on it what but, but i could imagine a lot of young guys seeing barbara boucher and and even that the lesbian scenes with rosalba neary and and you know uh barbara boucher and the girl who played sally Does uh, i don't know but she was she's been in other jello she yeah. looked familiar um, right? patrizia viotti oh, okay. she, she started she started in one that was weird. It was like uh, this guy had killed some somebody or something. And he was hiding out in this hotel, and like she appeared to him, and like I guess she she was the one he killed or his uh, mistress or something. And I always remember her because of the eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. she got like uh, Mia Goth eyebrows syndrome. Yeah. It's like, yeah. as well, I was reading up that um, Eleonora, obviously played by Rosalba Neri, was due to be played by Edwidge Finnett, but she got oh, pregnant. Yeah. Oh. And I kind of, we love that name? scene. Uh, we love that scene early on with the lesbian scene, but imagine that with Finnett and Boucher. Uh, crazy. I don't know. It's not, worth, it's not worth thinking about, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they could have had a three-way lesbian scene. Oh, oh God. Had, that could have been even better. Y'all wouldn't survive that, I don't no, know. Be... But the old slow-mo as well for about 10 minutes, that would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I think maybe if this had had a little more uh, murder, a few more murders in it, uh, style, those style, stylish jello type murders, I probably would have liked it better. But, it, yeah, it, sorry, Darren, it was too much sleaze for, for me. Too, no, too much Dana, sleaze. I totally understand because I was talking to Dirk last night and we were kind of, I, I said I was 50 50 whether Dana was going to like it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I already knew she would. <laughs> yeah, Dirk, Dirk was adamant that you wouldn't like it, which is fair enough. Um, and, and this was my second watch because me and Steve had... How long ago was it that we watched it? Probably when the Blu-ray came out. Probably okay, that's... eight or six. Hey, who signed that? Ago, Boucher? Before. Yeah, she signed oh, it. Okay. I yeah. believe, didn't she, Steve, in that Barbara Boucher's Yeah, it's it's room? it's signed with love. Yeah. Yes, but I will say that Barbara Boucher was very sweet and nice when we met her. So, yeah, yeah, she that, still that, looked pretty good up until like in her sixties. You know, I think she's pushing eighty now. Gotta be. 
Yeah, they're all. I mean, they're, I, I think she was in the same age group as Rosalba Neri, and then uh, uh, Edwidge is almost almost 10 years younger than them. Right, yeah. So, yeah. so she still has – she still hold it together for the time being. <laughs> you can tell Rosalba Neri's the type. She don't give a shit. The director could tell her to do whatever, and she's going to do it. You know? It seems that way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just, just just look at Slaughter Hotel. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, she, just the whole just... look. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Peter, oh, her Peter. demeanor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what's your thoughts on this? Do it like. What's well, my thoughts? Oh man, I love it, man. Yeah, you know the old, it's old going old up old. every time I watch it. It's uh... <laughs> right. I'm sure it is. <laughs> it, it literally yeah, is going up. Go there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> <Right. laughs> no, nah, it's uh, it's it's full of like, man, it's got a lot of shit going for it though. It's um, <clears throat> like I said, Granger, I think he kills it with the acting, and like during this time of his career, he wasn't getting a lot of roles, so he kept. So I was like reading stuff about him. He was going back and forth from America to Italy. But he was getting more roles in Italy and shit. Uh, but I think he he's a standout actor. But man, uh, Neri, every time she's on the screen, she she steals it, steals the scenes, man. I mean, I know Boucher is probably more attractive or whatever, but mm. Neri is uh, there's something about her, man. It's like a yeah a dark. <laughs> this dark she's, side to her. She's that, wicked looking. And, yeah. And all the this movies. evil aura line. She's got those eyes that you could just look into for forever. She, just she has, like in this in this one, she has split personalities, right? Is that is that the thing? Um, I just think she's kind of just, just ruthless. Yeah. Six, sexy, uh, kinky games and shit, you know? like. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. If you look at it like that, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> different. Yeah depending on who she's with at the time, basically. Now, would you go to a party at uh, uh, Farley, what is his name? Stuart? Farley Granger's, Farley Granger's uh, mansion out there? If those ladies were there, <laughs> all of you guys would go there. I think there'd be a queue around the block. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone would be wanting to go to them. Watching uh, Little Red, Red Riding Horse yeah. good, uh, pornos. Who knows? Maybe get involved in the, the making of Little Red Riding Hood as well. It's funny that movie how it goes too, because the, the big bad wolf scares her at first, yeah. and then she starts getting it on with him. And yeah, then, great. and then his ass starts running from her. She wants some more. <laughs> <laughs> she turned into a nympho on him. Yeah. That would have been great as like an extra feature, like if they showed a full length version of that or something. Would have been yeah, like a little yeah. twenty minute film or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess uh, if anybody else has anything else to say, I guess. Uh, I want to talk about oh. I, I want to talk about Darren's bedspread over there. Oh. I think it's his bed. No, I just keep looking at it, <laughs> and it looks like okay. I've got a I've got a point to make about this. It it looks like uh, Mike's bedspread in Phantasm. Really? I was saying, yeah. I've never even noticed that before. No, <laughs> nobody else has. <laughs> I know this odd things like that. I can't help it. What would y'all give this one out of ten? I give it a. I might give it an eight and a half. Uh, wow. I don't know. Seven for sure. Oh, okay. For I me, mean, I, I. It has the durable aspects, but it yeah. you know. It's visually. Like it, yeah. The, the visuals is why I give it such a high rate. <laughs> well, I, I if I compare this to like, uh, like deep red or something that's in another level yeah yeah so, no it's yeah but, it's but definitely i like i like that they left the island to go swimming i thought that was interesting <laughs> but or back to venice i guess because at least that's what i've seen but yeah, yeah. I, I i don't know i mean it's it's definitely a, a good one but uh it, I'll, I'll be generous and give it a five <laughs> Okay. Wow. I um on first watch, you know, I give this a seven, but watching it again last night has gone up to an eight. I think yeah. like Steve said, it's not quite the level like Tenebrae, Deep yeah. Red and all no, that. Yeah. But for me, 
it's just like just that level below it, I think. Um, red herons. I mean, you you can figure out. I mean, there's really nothing, no build up. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. We know. Yeah. We know what we know. We kind of know what happened, but we don't know the details. Right. That's that's the real gist of this. And but you know, it, yeah. it's yeah. definitely you know worth the worth the trip to go along and you know watch the film and see what happens. But visually speaking, it's a. I give it eight and a half. Just on mm. visual. <laughs> wow. So. Just on those two scenes alone. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm I'm a big fan of Neri. She's a. Oh, yeah. She's hotter than little sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, uh, like we were saying, I think the only way to get this legitimately is from the 88 films release um maybe you can check all the familiar places otherwise i'm um, sure you can get it on rare list if you want to yeah, watch it first basically yeah we're, we're sponsored by rare list <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> uh we just wish that they would uh the not paid make, version. yeah not make them five gigs a movie but either way um yeah so uh the next uh, pick Dana is. It's up to her. And and see sign. Well, it's not bad, but it's I already like, told him what I was. It's not. Picking. It's uh, we have uh, wild cards where you can pick a uh, a movie outside of our of our you know genre. <coughs> I haven't used girl. mine, but Dana's used a couple. It's a whole deck of fit wild cards. How do we go? How does that work with the wild cards? Is that once a year? Or? There's no rules. I just do it, no, I do it whenever exactly. I feel like it. Whenever you want, basically, yeah. Okay. I've used it as well with Alice Sweet Alice. And... Ah, cool. So, Dana, go. All right. So, in, in honor of the 4K coming out this month, The Exorcist. Ooh. The Exorcist? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then wow. after that, after that, I'm going to do the Turkish version of the Exorcist. Oh gosh, what that Satan? Yeah, oh. but we can talk about uh, Antichrist too, you know. Yeah, we can talk about some ripoffs. Yeah, Abby. <laughs> yeah, that's but, gonna be yeah, yeah. that will be a different show for sure. Look forward to that one. Um, yeah. I got a lot to say on the Exorcist. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, there's a lot going on with the Exorcist. Oh yeah. Sure. So, uh, uh, those who are not familiar, we usually do a audio show on the Dead Pit Patreon. Uh, just thought something different we could do this time would be it on on here on uh, YouTube. Uh, I, I I mean I, I'm sure we'll do some more on YouTube. Uh, one thing might be a good idea is sometime in October we can just do our favorite kind of uh, Euro cult kind of uh, horror films. Uh, we could do that maybe you know. Saturday or something. Uh, it just depends. Oh, yeah, whatever. man. Like but a Halloween think... special, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah that'd be awesome, yeah. yeah. Um, just like anyone who's watching, like, if they really enjoy these and they want, you know, they want us to do these maybe once, like, every couple of months or something, um, yeah. just let Steve know. And, yeah, I'm sure we could do that once every five, six weeks, something like that. Sure, definitely. Yeah. So we'll uh, be back in a couple of weeks with the uh lovely exorcist yeah yeah oh yeah Steve's not even gonna watch yeah. i have a good memory on that one. Oh yeah i it's watched the 4k it. but i'm gonna wait i'm not gonna watch it and then watch it again on 4K. it always switches spots for me and it's in my top three it always changes places with tcm though. So. Uh, i've always said it's the best film I've ever made uh, <clears throat> period, including any genre. Well, um, it's not, it's not my piece. favorite film, but it's <laughs> it's the best film ever made. I think. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Um, I'll probably watch the two versions as well. Um, just the you know. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, we'll be we'll end the stream, but we'll be back later on. You can uh, check on the Dead Pit Facebook page, and also if you're on Patreon, I. Uh, have two more episodes that I have to put together and then they'll be on there as well. So, uh, 
Everybody right. take care, and we'll be back uh, next time. Have a good one, guys. Bye, everybody. Later, y'all.